Cast your memory back to fifth grade and when you first started finding the factors of a number, you may have been told the divisibility trick for nines and threes. Suppose someone asks you if 743,652 is a multiple of nine. You can add up all of the digits, seven plus four plus three plus six plus five plus two, and that's 27. And since the sum is divisible by nine, then the whole number is. The same trick works for threes. We can see that 651,120 is divisible by 3 because 6 plus 5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 0 is 15, and 15 is a multiple of 3. Lots of kids are taught these tricks when they're learning about factors, and most never think about them again. Today we're going to take a look at why these tricks exist and uncover some deeper patterns behind them. What if you didn't believe that these tricks work? Well, I could show you example after example, but if you were really skeptical, that may not help. There could still be some number that breaks the pattern, in the thousands, millions, billions. So instead of just showing examples, I want to prove to you that the nines trick works. First, we know that the trick works for 9, 18, 27, and other small numbers, because those are easy to check. Now, to show it works for all multiples of 9, we'll start by pretending it works for some multiple of 9, called n. Then we will show that n plus 9 also satisfies the trick. Since we know that the trick works for small multiples of 9, and we can build every multiple of 9 by just adding 9, then we can conclude that the trick will always work. To get started, we will represent n in this table. Maybe n is a number ending in 8, 2, 3, 4, but to be general, let n have digits x0, x1, x2, x3, all the way to xk. Now we will add 9 to n. First, let's pretend that the 1's place is 0, or x0 equals 0. In this case, we don't carry over any 10's, and so all of the digits remain the same except the 1's place, which changes from 0 to 9. Now we look at the sum of the new digits. We know that the old sum, xk plus xk minus 1 plus all the way to x0, is a multiple of 9, because that's in our assumption. For the new sum, we simply replace x0, which was a 0, with a 9. So the new sum will be 9 more than the original sum, and this means that the new sum is divisible by 9. So the 9's trick works for n plus 9 if x0 is 0. Now, pretend x0 is not 0. When we add 9 to n, the 1's place decreases by 1, we carry over a 10, and the 10's place increases by 1. Every other digit remains the same. Well, you might complain and point out that x1 might be a 9. In that case, we add 1 to x1, and now the 10's place is 0, we carry over 100, and the 100's place increases by 1. Well, you might complain again and point out that the 100's place might be a 9. But then we do the same thing. The 100's place is now 0, and we increase the 1000's place by 1. In general, if there are some amount of consecutive 9's in the digits to the left of the 1's place, they will all turn to 0 and the next non-9 digit will increase by 1. Let's consider the sum of the new digits now. Like in the other case, we already know that the old sum, xk plus xk minus 1 plus all the way to x0, is a multiple of 9. Then we subtract 1 from the 1's place, subtract some number of 9's, that number might be 0, and then add 1 to some higher place. The plus 1 minus 1 cancels out, and we are left with the old sum minus some number of 9's. If we start with a multiple of 9, and subtract a whole number of 9's, then we end up with something which is still divisible by 9. So this means that the 9's trick works for n plus 9 in this case too. 
I hope that even the most skeptical among you are convinced that the nines trick works now. We have shown that if we take any multiple of nine that satisfies the trick and add nine to it, the result will still satisfy the trick. By induction, we can see that the trick works for every multiple of nine. There is a similar proof for the threes trick, but it involves checking a few more cases, so I will leave that as a challenge to you all. You may still have some questions. Sure, we proved the nines trick works, but why does it work? What's special about the numbers nine and three? The short answer is that nine is one less than 10, and three is a factor of nine. But there wouldn't be nine more minutes left in this video if that was the end of the discussion. To really understand why the nines trick works, we need to think about the characteristic of the numbers that we are using. If I write 522, we check to see if it's divisible by nine using the digits, the representation, the name of the number. But the only reason we represent 522 in this way is because we are using base 10. This is what we call an extrinsic property of a number. So the nines trick must work because of the relationship between nine and 10. Namely, nine is one less than 10. If the nines trick works because of the number system that we're using, it's natural to ask about divisibility tricks with other number systems. If you've never heard of other bases before, I encourage you to look at other sources as well, since this isn't the focus of this video. I will leave a link in the description where you can get more information. When we represent a number in standard notation, it is actually shorthand for the sum of powers of 10. For example, 4,678 is 4 times 10 cubed plus 6 times 10 squared plus 7 times 10 to the first power plus 8 times 10 to the zero. But there is nothing special about the number 10 here. I mean, sure, you can make some argument about the fact that humans have 10 fingers, but in an alternate universe where humans have a different number of fingers, it would make just as much sense to have a standard system with base 12 or 9 or 23. Base 2, or binary, is probably the most commonly used other than base 10, since computers use binary to store data. If we wanted to represent 5 in binary, first we write it as powers of 2. 1 times 2 squared, plus 0 times 2 to the first power, plus 1 times 2 to the 0. Then we simply represent the number using only the coefficients. So in binary, we write 5 as 1, 0, 1. If we want to talk about divisibility tricks, it makes sense to start with base 3. In base 2, there should be a 1's divisibility trick. But every number is divisible by 1, so that doesn't really matter. In base 3, there should be a 2's divisibility trick. Let's see if that works. In base 3, we have three possible digits, 0, 1, and 2. Let's start counting in base 3. I'll write the base 10 representation underneath so you can keep track of the numbers. We have 0, 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2. Now these are the numbers which are divisible by 2. Notice that the sum of the digits in each circled number is even. So in base 3, you can tell if a number is divisible by 2 by adding all the digits and seeing if the sum is even. Let's jump to base 7 now. We have 7 digits to represent numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We'll start counting in base 7, but this time we'll write the numbers in a grid. Let's take a look at all of the numbers which are divisible by 6. We have 0, 6, 1, 5, 2, 4, 3, 3, 4, 2, 5, 1, 6, 0, and 6, 6. The sum of the digits in each of these numbers is divisible by 6, so our rule for divisibility tricks holds. Notice that all of these numbers form a diagonal across the grid. That's really interesting. In fact, you may have seen before that the same pattern occurs when we highlight the multiples of 9 in a base 10 grid. Here I have a counting table, 
just like you might have used in primary school. And we will color in 0, 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, 72, 81, 90, and 99. The same pattern occurs again. Now let's go back to the base 7 grid. I've colored in all of the multiples of 6 green, just like we saw on the whiteboard, and we will color in all of the multiples of 3 this time. Some are already colored in green, but that's okay. These numbers form diagonals across the board as well. And if we color in all of the multiples of 2, the same pattern emerges. Back to the base 10 grid, we can color in all of the multiples of 3, and we get the diagonals again. So it seems like there's some connection between diagonal patterns in the multiples and visibility tricks. Let's uncover what that is. First of all, why do these patterns appear? We will answer this question using the base 7 grid, but this argument can generalize to a grid of any size. Pretend that there is a frog who travels the squares in ascending order. He hops over six squares with one leap and starts at the top left. Since the size of Mr. Frog's leaps is one less than the width of the grid, with each leap he falls one column behind. A similar thing happens if Mr. Frog leaps over two or three squares at once. Here we see him making leaps of size three. After two leaps, he lands on a multiple of six. Since the size of his leaps is constant, his trail leaves behind the same diagonal pattern. These diagonals actually give another proof of the divisibility tricks that we've been talking about. Suppose Mr. Frog starts on a diagonal. To move to the next square in the pattern, first he hops one column to the left. This will decrease the ones place by one. Then he hops one row down. If the second place is not six, then it will increase by one. We can see this between squares 1, 5, and 2, 4. We subtract from the ones place and add to the second place, so the total sum of the digits does not change. But if the second place is 6, like in 1, 6, 5, the second place will become 0 and the third place will increase by 1. When Mr. Frog leaps from 1, 6, 5 to 2, 0, 4, the total sum of the digits decreases by 6. We can expand this reasoning if the third, fourth, fifth, or more places are 6 as well. So when Mr. Frog moves along a diagonal, either the sum of the digits remains the same, or it decreases by a multiple of 6. This means that if the first square in a diagonal satisfies the divisibility trick, then all the others will as well. Now, what if Mr. Frog hops between diagonals? Well, the next diagonal starts on the same row that the previous diagonal ends. A diagonal ends on a number with a zero in the ones place. So at the start of the next diagonal, the sum of the digits will be six more than the sum at the end of the previous diagonal. This means that if the end of a diagonal satisfies the divisibility trick, then the start of the next diagonal will as well. So our takeaway for today is that 9 and 3 are not special. I mean, they are special if we're using base 10, which to be fair is most commonly used, but they're not special in the grand scheme of math. In fact, this tells us that there's a divisibility trick for any number. Suppose that someone asks you if 1781 is divisible by 13. All you have to do is write 1,781 in base 14, so that's 9 times 14 squared plus 1 times 14 to the first power plus 3 times 14 to the 0. And 9 plus 1 plus 3 is 13, so that means 1,781 is divisible by 13. But it might just be easier to grab a calculator. As always, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this number expedition. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts down below. Until next time, keep exploring.